and and so I guess part of this filling the cup is not necessarily having a specific vision and being open to how it'll go, right? right? Just being present and moving through your five senses through these activities so that you can naturally elevate your dopamine, which we'll talk all about the five senses in another episode and do that activity together with you. Hello, beautiful humans. Welcome back to another episode of Embrace You First. This is part two of two of filling up your cup. We talked about what it means to fill up your cup and the neurotransmitter called dopamine in the last episode. But before we get started and dive deep in, I'm going to share a review of the week. This review comes from iTunes from Kathy Arrigo. This podcast is a gift. What a gift. I absolutely love the content and tone of this podcast. It's filled with practical, doable self-care tips, information that are shared in a fun, upbeat manner. Dr. Tanya and Dr. Mary invite their audience to become healthier and happier individuals. Their passion for this subject is undeniable. Thank you so much, Kathy. And thank you to everyone who has rated us, right? So awesome. Mm -hmm. So sweet. We really appreciate your ratings. It's what brings us to come back here. And we're going to go big because of you. So please continue to give us a thumbs up rating and, uh, you know, share. And please uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. So let's jump in. That raised my dopamine. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. And that's just, this is why we're doing right. We want to make an impact. We want to make a difference. So thank you for your comments. And definitely add in suggestions if you want for future episodes. And today we're going to go on and talk more about how to fill your cup, but really specifically and tactically what you can do at home. Yes. And to remind you, Briefly, dopamine is that joy reward chemical in our brains, the same chemical that's released in our brains during attraction. These chemicals make us giddy and energetic and euphoric and even leaving sometimes to decrease appetite and insomnia. Um, So it's that feeling of joy and love and happiness. And it's what we kind of all want more of, right? Yes. So- and, and of course, it also, you know, helps translate into just being a healthier human being, because yeah. it's not just what you, how you feel impacts our physical well-being. Isn't that it true? Our physical and how we interact with our environment and the people in our lives. And mm-hmm. if we're feeling really joyful internally, then we can pay it forward and communicate more effectively and uh, efficiently with people and people will will all like energetically vibe healthier together. Right Now I want to add in, cause I, we didn't actually talk about this before. So when we talk about joy, it's not like you need to be joyous 24 seven. No. <laughs> <laughs> so when we're talking about parts and balance, right. In Chinese medicine. That's like, right. Right. Like, so <laughs> yeah, exactly. So in Chinese medicine, we talk about Exactly. It's manic. So we're not teaching you to be manic 24 seven. It's about being human. Yeah. And, and because for the most part, honestly, these days where it's the lack of, so we just want to help you fill the cup. So, but it's not about necessarily having those dopamine hits all the time naturally either, because to be human is to feel and express all the emotions, some of which are very uncomfortable And that's okay. And we'll speak to more of that in a future episode on um, our different emotions, which, you know, include frustration, anger, we've covered fear, but anyway, all the rest of it on a future episode. So here we go on today. It's about joy. (laughs) Today is about joy. And I love that you bring that up because honestly, it's true. It's not like we're sitting here joyful all the time, but it's just finding ways to make it a little bit more sustainable. And of course, you're going to have days where you're sad. And if you can't experience sad or the other emotions, it's hard to feel joy. So it's actually okay to sit with them, uh, sadness sometimes and grief. Right. And, right? Because yeah, otherwise, so you're you- comparing, like yeah. you have something to compare it to. If you're like always, um, just it's like that joy seeker or adventure seeker, then you don't know how to be with the other stuff. And we need to know how to be with the other uncomfortable stuff. Joy can sometimes just being like sitting in contentment, right? Just kind of being okay with quiet space. That Mm -hmm. is also something that helps to raise your dopamine in a sustainable way. 
Um, so even though I'm talking about falling in love and that's actually an excess joy, right? It's not ex- necessarily the best state to be in um, where you lose your appetite and can't sleep. Right. Um, I just wanted to lead into that because it was an interesting, fascinating story for me to share where my mother who has Alzheimer's, which is a condition we mentioned in the last podcast where dopamine levels have been shown to be low. And when she was first um, moved into an assisted living facility for safety reasons, uh, she her mobility was really poor. And she met a man there who also has Alzheimer's and they connected <laughs> for eight months. And they were both in this very elated, probably the unhealthy oh. state of, of uh, high dopamine and joy, which we didn't really weren't concerned about. Um, you know, until, you know, uh, she's going to kill me one day. In her, she, she doesn't know the difference. She'll, she'll forget. It's okay. She'll forget. That's right. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Don't judge us. <laughs> Don't judge. But uh, yeah, so they caught her, like the people, the, the social, like the support workers were, you know, they would walk in and find them together <gasps> naked. Oh my goodness. Home. And sometimes, unfortunately, she would show up to the you know, the uh, cafeteria bottoms off. And so, I mean, clearly that was the state where we realized, okay, we need to get her some more support. And then, so now she's in a healthier facility where they're really helping support her. But anyhow, in this facility for eight months, she was just in such an amazing, um, elated, um, happy mode that she remembered so much more she was more lucid and so her memory came back and her mobility improved but she all she could talk about was this man that she had met so but it was so it was it was clearly unbalanced but it's just the power of love and the power of neurotrans the neurotransmitter dopamine i just thought it was super fascinating and yes. uh, i obviously didn't go into that level of do- uh, detail before <laughs> on instagram but i did share part of the lovely part of that story so there you go if you're listening you got a little more in on that um <laughs> But it's such a it's such a beautiful, powerful neurotransmitter, especially when it's a little more stable and we can sustain it. And when we have, you know, like the natural wave of it rather than a high like that, perhaps, or like when we were talking about the last episode, perhaps gaming or being on TV too long or scrolling on social media and then getting the crash. So we're going to talk about some creative ways uh, that we can, um, you know, improve that dopamine neurotransmitter and through COVID times when we're all in, you know, locked up in our houses together. And perhaps as we discussed with Dr. Uh, Jordan uh, Wiggins, all about, um, you know, even just being in the same house as our spouses for long, for long periods of time and figuring out ways to reconnect and be intimate and, um, you know, not uh, kind of just walk around mopey and feeling, you know, like the world is over because <laughs> it's easy to do that, right? Like sure. it's so easy to get stuck in a rut more now more than ever um, because there's a lot on, you know, the news uh, that is very scary and sad. And so we still though have the capability of uh, taking care of ourselves. We still have that ability and to thrive. So, yes. So, so let's actually address that specifically, right? So sure. going back to, um, we often do things for other people and then who is on the roster last to help ourselves, right? For the most part, for, for many of us, it's like, um, I have so many demands. I have so many deadlines. I have people to take care of. So I'm going to be last. But what we're saying is we're going to name some things that you can do that are simple, that is doable to really help take care of you, not just as like a luxury, but it is truly as a nece- out of necessity to help you thrive, especially during these challenging times. So do you want to, I get like, you know, you named off, well, actually I, I have a list in front of us and the very <laughs> yeah. first thing is, it could Take be very simple things like taking a bath, right? But set the ambiance, set the ambiance with your favorite playlist, light a candle, make the space, make it like you're going to a spa with your girlfriends, maybe even well, maybe zoom with the friends so she can see your face or, you know, like you're in the bath, I get it. So you can wear your, bikini, you're, you can wear your bikini, right? And enjoy time with friends or alone, right? Or so alone, or alone. Yeah. Time is good. 
Yes. Well, and I guess I think you're alluding to that because there's a lot of times we we have been so self-isolating yeah. that maybe we need more connection. But so it really depends. It's whatever works for you. So for some, it's like, oh my gosh, like I have kids and I have this husband's like, mm. so I want to be but totally by myself in this bathroom and like just kind of <laughs> yeah. zone out, zone right? Out. But and how cool would it be if you live by yourself Exactly. You know, you're kind of missing out. So you do this with another friend who perhaps has kids and it's the end of the night and wants to do it with you. So you get hilarious. and you jump in a bathtub, get your bubbles on and, uh, you know, the have a cup of tea and by candlelight music right. and all of a sudden you're in spa together. So. Yeah, I love that. That's a great idea. We'll have to do that one day. <laughs> we should. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> Let's do Maybe it. That'll day be night. a thing. A yeah. day night, a spa party yeah a spa zoom party except yeah. we, you guys by the way we're we're we want you to be safe because these are electronic devices if it goes in the water we don't want you to get electrocuted so right. we have to do it safely <laughs> and i recommend probably tea over wine so you don't fall asleep in the tub but if you're talking to a friend you know <laughs> so <laughs> yes and then another thing that's really like it was so cute and simple that we did uh the other day um, actually a few Fridays in a row with, uh, actually it's just Phoenix. And I saw my daughter and I was literally put on the party rocker express her idea while we did uh, yoga and put on, she said, mommy, I want relaxation music. And so we put on yoga music and we just super relaxed and quietly, she just copied me and we did yoga and it was heavenly. And she like oh, that's so got nice. addicted to it because in a positive way, she's like, okay, mommy, it's yoga time yoga time in the basement with the zoom I mean with the uh, party rocker and so I just thought that that was super cute and it was very um I was so present and it was fantastic so what's something that you have been doing that tell me about your dog (laughs) well so that's interesting that you say that because you're saying you did it with your daughter well I with this um 12 week old puppy uh in the morning I'm getting up super super crazy early with her and it's like gosh, I need the yoga. I need the movement before I start the day. So how the heck do I do that? So now I actually have been doing puppy yoga because she'll literally be with me while I'm doing yoga. And it's not, it doesn't look like the way it used to for sure. But I, I loved your reel. <laughs> like the R-E-E-L on Instagram. Oh. I was like, is she for real? I'm like doing yes. That? Yes. Like yoga with the dog. It's so- yes. And yeah. So, you know, company. Exactly. So it's like I get the enjoyment of the actual physical stretch, but simultaneously, instead of like seething, going, oh, I need to stretch in this particular way for a certain length of time, I just went with the flow and enjoyed her company because she just wants that love herself. So, you know, sitting with that. And and so I guess part of this filling the cup is not necessarily having a specific vision and being open to how it'll go. Right. right. Just being present and moving through your five senses through these activities so that you can naturally elevate your dopamine, which we'll talk all about the five senses in another episode and do that activity together with you. Another one that I love doing the other night was stargazing. So I took our children into the forest um, at around 5 p.m. when it was dark and we took a flashlight and then we turned off the light and then we looked up at the sky and looked at the stars with a stargazing app. There was technology involved, but um, for a while we used um, just our eyes and the flashlight on and off. And it was like very magical experience. So just literally being in the forest, looking up at the stars and uh, because you know with the city lights it takes away the stars and stargazing is so heavenly it's so beautiful so lovely and then so you know counter to that we are so busy with our work and all the to do on our to-do list we don't have enough time to actually just take a moment take a break and so it could be little thing like you know what I'm going to give myself permission to sleep in yes or I'm going to take a moment. And even though I don't have time, I'm actually going to take some time to work out or do my puppy yoga or, oh my gosh, I have to say having a puppy, I had no idea how much work it was going to be. So even (laughs) taking a shower, it was like, literally this morning, I'm like, oh my God, it was like heaven taking a shower. I I didn't realize that I was going to have a hard time going for a shower. (laughs) So cute. 
So having that time, like you, I love that you said that just sleeping in, giving yourself the permission to just sleep in, have a day where it's all about you and tag team. If you're married and have kids where you sleep in, work out, shower, put on some makeup, if you're a woman, get dressed up if you're a man and like, you know, just get fancy, take some photos, you know, do some selfies. And maybe once you've had your day, cook dinner so you can connect with your spouse, like just do things that are like just nourishing in a day by yourself to reboot, recharge. I love it that you said, oh, gee, get dress, dress up in your fanciest outfit because like who does that right now? Because no <laughs> we're not going out, right? We're not going out. Except for you and I doing podcasts. It's like, oh, we got to change our outfit. <laughs> <laughs> Part of the fun of this podcast. Yeah, yes, yes. Either that or we have like one outfit and we wear it every single podcast. So, you right. know, we have two options. <laughs> yes. And you got me that selfie camera. Thank you so much for Christmas, which was really sweet. And so I'm excited to use it. So that's why I was like, take pictures of yourself. You know, that idea yeah. kind of struck a chord with me. Haven't done that one yet, but uh, definitely have had days where we just relax through. Um, so I think that... Uh, where are we at time wise? Uh, we have uh, four minutes. I just want to, you know, I, yes, it's because I she walked people. into the podcast. And, you know, since we're talking about what fills my cup and um, you and I both have had fertility challenges and everyone mm. knows that knows me, it took us six yeah. years to actually have her be birthed. Oh. And so obviously, you know, her coming in, I'm not going to get mad at no, right? like I yes, wouldn't. This is like the new norm. This is the new think, norm. I think and we're just gonna have to get used to it. You know, yeah. little kids so, coming in on visits. <laughs> exactly. So during the podcast, if you hear little extra noises, it's because we are all home together. And she came in, and she and you know we're holding hands. So that fills oh. my cup, of course. Yeah. Right. Totally. So thank you, and I'll I'm I'll see you later. Okay, honey. Why are you done? Can you come up? Yes, I will. Love you. I love cool to connect cards and the 26 questions to fall in love and just sitting on the couch and, you know, with your spouse or calling a friend and kind of asking questions of each other that, you know, puts you into this insightful, deep connected mode where you would be go beyond like the day, uh, day to day work stuff and kids stuff. So like thinking outside the box. So like quizzing each other on deeper questions. And we did a cool to connect um, live Instagram. We're going to do some more of that, but I encourage you all to do the same. So get cool to connect cards or the 26 questions to fall in love. And right. you don't even have to do it with a partner. You get, it doesn't have to be someone you're going to fall in love with. You can just literally ask do it for yourself and for or, yourself. It's yeah. Super interesting. Right. Yeah. And, and so go on to embrace you first.com. And we're going to have all that information in our show notes. And so I did like that. And now you're giving me an idea because I have a girlfriend that is having her birthday and we're going to do a little zoom call. So I think I'll use the cool to connect oh, card and yeah. just do a little something there. That'll be so cool. Yes, that is awesome. They have no idea what's coming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. okay. Lucky all right. Better. So obviously we've been talking about what is filling our cup. And so before we end off, because we don't need to ask what's filling our cup because we basically the whole episode is on this. But on that note, we, um, I wanted to bring up when I was, I went to a course and uh, this name, Wahei Takeda, he was actually known as the Warren Buffett of Japan. He just passed away. I, I forget what year, but not too long ago, but he is known to be like a spiritual um leader who is like one of the most successful uh, investors in Japan. But what was cool and memorable is that he has this practice. And when he decides to invest in a company, he would go and meet with the CEO and then actually request that they follow his practice. And what his practice is, it's having gratitude. I mean, we all know about a gratitude practice, but he's like the ultimate gratitude challenge, which is a thousand gratitudes a day. And he, and when he asks the CEOs, of course they want his money. So they like, yeah, 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 we'll do it. But he knows when it actually works and when it doesn't, because all the companies that he invests in that does this practice, even if it becomes like three gratitudes a day, because who the heck can do a thousand? Um, he sees the company, the dynamics, the way it's run, everything is at a different level. And at that vibrational level, the company just succeeds better, which is so awesome. 
so right? amazing. Yes. And so with that, you know, what does a thousand gratitudes a day look like? Well, I counted it out. If you sleep eight hours a day, you're left with 16 hours. So that becomes about one gratitude thought per minute. So it may sound insane, and it is. But really, what I think that actually becomes is or what his practice is, is just being mindful every moment of the day and having gratitude around every moment. Right, which is awesome. It'll yeah. totally raise your dopamine. So I challenge you, I'm going to start the timer one minute. Let's see how many you can get in. <laughs> oh, okay. Right. The second, how many, yeah, how many not? gratitude? In a minute. Yeah. So go for it. Be well, grateful. <laughs> well, I am totally grateful to learn about this practice and I know that I won't get to a thousand, but holy cow, I'm totally up for the challenge so that I'm more mindful. Number two, that um, I have a roof over my head. Number three is that I'm sharing this podcast with you. We have technology to do this despite COVID and that, you know, I'm grateful for my health. I'm grateful for this chair that is comfortable that I cannot I'm not having a bad back sitting here for hours. <laughs> I'm grateful for good lighting. I'm grateful that I have to, I can put on makeup and hide some of my blemishes, not blemishes, but like spots. I'm grateful that Zoom has a filter that makes you look even better. I'm grateful that <laughs> I can read, I can write, I can add, I can, I have cream to put on my hands because they get so dry in winter. I'm grateful that I have a stool underneath my feet. So Amazing. Otherwise they're hanging. Like 15, 14 or really? 15. Okay. Yes, that was fantastic. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. So and let's do sure that with that you. You could probably repeat it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you are great. Let's do it. <laughs> okay, let's do it. And then let's go. Okay, you time me. All right. So. Okay, go. I'm grateful that I can even think about being grateful. I'm grateful for my mobility, that I can move freely. I'm grateful that my mother is still here, even though she seems like an kind of empty vessel with her memory, I, that I, can, I could still hug her possibly one day soon. I'm grateful for my children after going through eight years of infertility that we've completed our family. I'm grateful for the fact that even though my back does actually hurt in this chair, that I know it's gonna be better in a day. I'm grateful that I got to work out this morning, that I have a roof over my head. I'm grateful that I can see outside. I'm grateful that I'm going to get outside today. I'm grateful that I have motivation. I'm grateful that I know how to eat super healthy to feed my mind and my body. I'm grateful for the stars and how beautiful they are at night. And I'm grateful that I can teach my children to be grateful and that they are grateful. I'm grateful <laughs> that they teach me every day to do things that I teach them so they're self, they motivate me back. I'm grateful that I have a thriving practice. <laughs> awesome. So That's bad. like 19. Oh, 19. No, not okay, more. So, yeah. I was so, just more verbose, like talking about, like, I, I was getting know, into the gratitude. Right. Yes. So right. Think, like, yeah. Yes. And it's good. So like the reasons behind it is really good. And I think just even repeating what you're grateful for. So for example, when I'm with a patient or then when I'm with you, I'm very focused and present. And I'm just like, you can just be like kind of in the moment of gratitude that we have this ability to connect. And that could be, you could be just doing that for the entire minute, right? That you're thinking of gratitude. Awesome. We are done. Thank you. 